The next thing I want to just review with you is take a, pick up your dowels and we'll put our straws on our dowels. And we'll just set up a good bow hand, whether it's down here or up here. You can just take your dowel off your violin or viola, put it on your shoulder. And what we're going to do is just move the bow. Now, what we're trying to get them to do is get the feel of doing this. The, the wrist is, the fingers are flexible, the wrist is flexible, and we're going to track in one direction. And we're unfolding from the elbow. Now, have you ever seen a kid do this before? With the violin or the viola, or the cello? They're doing this, they're locking the elbow, they're locking the wrist, they're doing all these things like this, or they're leaning in. It's very, very difficult to do when you're doing this. It's, if you lock, it, it bends and it breaks, okay? So that's a great example. <laughs> that one, that doll took one for the team. Okay, so whether it's here or even German bow, this is really great for German bow, by the way. Oh my gosh, it's a really cool thing. So it forces all the behaviors. Here's a principle for you. Any activity you can create that forces a behavior in kids and gives them muscle memory, that's a good thing. Another way to do this same thing is, I'm gonna reverse this for a second, since I broke it. You can also hold the straw and have them move the stick. That's kind of cool because it gives them a sensation of the feel of the stick, okay? All right, good, you can set those down. Another way to do that is you could set your bow here, have them do it on the bow. They can do this, okay, with the cellos and basses.